All right, so let's talk about the area between curves or the area between two functions on a graph. This is going to require uh, some integral calculus uh, with use of trigonometric functions, uh, understanding basic trig, unit circle. So uh, go ahead and brush up on those things before we get started if you need to. I've got some videos on other playlists that should help with that. And uh, especially with the integral calculus and trigonometric integral calculus before this video on this playlist, the integrals for the Calc 1 videos. All right, let's get started. So I've got two functions here. The blue function on my graph is y equals cosine x. And the red function is y equals sine x. Well, I'm interested in these two values here, 5 pi over 4 and pi over 4, these two x values. If you notice, these are where these two functions, they intersect one another at these two points. And everywhere in between that, these functions have space in between them where we can measure the area of that space. They also have space in between them here and here, and they'll have many spaces that will have area in between. But what I'm interested in is the area in between the two intersection points on the x-axis of x equals pi over 4 and x equals 5 pi over 4. How do we figure out how much area is in here where I've got these little white straight lines, these tick marks? How do we figure that out? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, recognize all of our parts and values, and then we're going to need to set up a definite integral. So let's go ahead and set up that definite integral. If we remember correctly, let's do a quick recap. A definite integral just tells us it's an integral over some interval, a to b, of some function to some variable of integration that's going to spit out area how much area on uh, the on a on a function between a and b how much area is in there so that's what a uh, a definite integral is going to tell us as opposed to an indefinite integral which doesn't care one bit about intervals it's just going to take some function to some variable of integration and it's going to spit out an antiderivative so it's going to spit out what function when I take its derivative gives me this f of x. So that's what we're talking about, definite versus indefinite integrals. We're going to need a definite integral, and we're going to have to take an indefinite integral or an antiderivative once we get started with that. But let's go ahead and take our definite integral. Well, we know this sign tells us to integrate. What are, what are going to be these values here? What's going to be our upper and lower limit of integration? Well, let's see here. The first thing we're looking at is pi over 4. So I'd say pi over 4 would be a really good lower limit of integration here. In fact, the only one that's going to work. So we have pi over 4 on the bottom. And then, well, 5 pi over 4 is the other thing we're interested in. So let's make 5 pi over 4 our limit of integration on the top. 5 pi over 4. All right, now we're going to have a function inside. What function is going to go in here? Well, we're trying to figure out the area between curves. If it was just sine or cosine, we would just we just put sine x, right? And then dx, and we'd be done. Well, it's not just sine, though. It's not just cosine. It's uh, sine and cosine. We're trying to figure out how much is in between there. So let's look at this really cool rule. If we're trying to figure out the area between curves, we're interested in the definite integral over a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. Another way to write this that's, uh, that's, not, that, that's more layman's terminology, well, look at this. We're just interested in the definite integral over a to b of the top minus the bottom to d something, right? So this is what is really useful for us, and we'll say dx. Uh, this is what this is what's useful for us here. So basically, we're asking the, the the definite integral of the top minus the bottom to some variable of integration. So what's the top? What's the bottom? Well, you may be tempted to say, "Oh, well, uh, cosine's the top here." Well, look at it this way though. Which function is actually higher when we start? Which function are we, we coming into the top from? So we'll just we'll call that sine. Okay. So we'll have sine be our first thing here. So what we're going to need is we're going to have uh, 5 pi over 4, pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 of sine x minus, now the bottom, cosine x. dx. Now, what are we going to need to do? Well, this is going to equal something. We're not sure what it equals. So let's go ahead and break this up. 
sine x minus cosine x, this is the exact same thing. We're going to need to find the antiderivative of this part right here. So we need the antiderivative of this. How are we going to do that? Well, let's go ahead and let's take this step by step. It may seem excruciating and, and, uh, and painfully obvious what we're doing, but let's just make our lives simpler by not skipping any steps. So we're going to have the, definite, the indefinite integral now. We're taking the antiderivative of sine x minus the definite integral, the indefinite integral of cosine x dx dx. Okay, great. So now what is this going to be and what is this going to be? And that will tell us what we can do here. Well, sine x dx, cosine x dx, we're interested in their indefinite integral, their antiderivative. So what we're doing, what we're saying here is what function, when I take its derivative, something prime is going to equal sine. Something prime, something else prime, is going to equal cosine. What are these things? Well, let's think about it for a second. I know that if I take <coughs> the derivative of negative cosine, then that's going to give me the derivative of sine. So I can say negative cosine x is my antiderivative. So I've got my first one. And then if I take the derivative of sine, I'm going to get cosine. But since we're saying minus, let's make this negative sine x, right? Minus sine x. So now I've got my second one. So it's negative cosine minus sine, negative cosine x minus sine x. These are what we're interested in. We found the information we need here. So these are our antiderivatives. Now we go ahead and we, we plug that in. These are our answers. So let's make this slightly smaller so we're going to have room. Equals negative cosine x. Yeah, we're not going to have room. So let's go to a new page. Equals. Let's rewrite what we have. The definite integral from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. I'm sorry, that looks messy. 5 pi over 4 of sine x minus cosine x dx. Well, this is just equal to, as we said, um, negative cosine x minus sine x, so negative cosine x minus sine x. And now we're going to have this big bracket here, which means we're going to evaluate this over some uh, interval. And what's this interval going to be? Well, you guessed it. It's going to be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So, what is this equal to? This is what we need to worry about now. Well, we just need to start plugging things in here. We're going to have negative cosine of 5 pi over 4, top minus bottom again here. So, negative cosine, I'm sorry, negative cosine of 5 pi over 4 plus sine of 5 pi over 4, right? Well, actually, it'll be negative at this point. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. Minus sine of 5 pi over 4. Okay. Minus negative. I know that may seem a little silly, but we'll fix it in a minute. Minus negative cosine of pi over 4 plus sine of pi over 4. Okay, well, make that an actual bloody 4. Okay, there we go. Great. So this is equal to something. Now we need to figure out what. Alright, so we've got our cosine of 5 pi over 4 and our cosine of pi over 4, our sine of 5 pi over 4 and our sine of pi over 4. So we've taken care of each piece. All of our signs are correct. This is negative. This is minus a negative, right? So what is cosine of 5 pi over 4, sine of 5 pi over 4? Well, let's go ahead and, and just instead of, I know we may be able to think, oh, 5 pi over 4, pi over 4, all that. So let's just ran 2 over 2. Well, let's, let's draw our unit circle and, and, and understand why wow, these things, wow, if I can actually draw a circle. Whew. 
Ooh, maybe I can, maybe I can't. This is horrible. Um, all right, I'm going to pause this until I can get a good circle. Hang tight. Okay, much better. So, I've drawn a unit circle here, and we're going to have theta here, right? Our angle theta. Well, this angle is going to be pi over 4, right here. And this is going to be 5 pi over 4, okay? Great. So, what value do we have right here? Well, we're going to have radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. And down here... Well, we're below the x-axis and to the left, so we're going to have negative rad 2 over 2, comma, negative rad 2 over 2. So now let's go ahead and start plugging things in. Let's go back. Well, cosine of 5 pi over 4, this is 5 pi over 4, everything's negative here. The cosine of 5 pi over 4, well, cosine is this one on the left, right here. So it's going to be just negative rad 2 over 2. So, and let's write this in red ink so we see what we're doing. This is negative red 2 over 2. Now, minus, uh, or plus sine, I'm sorry, did I write minus? Oh, well, it should be minus for now. So we'll say plus, uh, minus sine of 5 pi over 4, which, well, we can look at that, and it's just red 2 over 2 as well, right? Negative red 2 over 2. Okay, and now over here, cosine and sine of pi over 4. Well, this is just going to be red 2 over 2 and red 2 over 2. Cosine, sine, see? Not a big deal. So we have red 2 over 2, and we have red 2 over 2. Now let's talk about all of these negatives and positives and all this kind of stuff. Well, this is a this is negative. Uh, all, all Everything over here is negative. So we're really negating all of this stuff. This is a positive. This is a positive, right? So what's get, what's happening is, and these are also going to turn into plus signs, so everything over here is just going to end up canceling out, right? So we don't have anything over on the side. Good grief, people. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Hang on. It's not canceling out. We're just having... I, I was thinking it was negative. Okay, so we have... All of this is positive, so we end up with a positive rad 2 over 2, plus rad 2 over 2, well, plus rad 2 over 2 again, plus another rad 2 over 2. So we have 4 times rad 2 over 2, well, that just turns into 2 times rad 2, doesn't it? Yeah, 4 times rad 2 over 2, we're just saying, we're dividing it by 2. So this is really just turning into, let's see, red should show up good. So this is just 2 times rad 2. So if we go back to our original screen and we look at this, Here's what we were trying to find out. We wanted to find out the area between the curves y equals cosine x and y equals sine x over the x interval x equals pi over 4 and x equals 5 pi over 4. And we found out that it was just the area is equal to green marker 2 times rad 2 units squared. That's how much area is in between this little space right here. So how do we do this and what do we need to know to do it? Well, uh, as you saw almost did, we all we needed to know how to do basic arithmetic and not make stupid mistakes like I nearly did there. We needed to know how to set up an integral. We needed to know what went where on the integral. <clears throat> We needed to know which piece came first, which piece was the one that we were going to subtract. We needed to know an appropriate value or uh, variable of integration. Then we needed to be able to plug everything in appropriately once we uh, took our antiderivatives. We needed to know how to do that. We needed to know how to plug in after we did that. And then we needed to have an acceptable understanding of the unit circle and what these values of uh, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, what the trigonometric sine and cosine values were for those things. So, uh, not a tricky problem, but kind of labor-intensive. So, uh, that's all there is to this. Red, uh, 2 times red 2 over 2 units squared is our area between uh, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 on cosine x and sine x.